she knew she was already prepping herself. And so, you know, my mom is so jealous, Auntie. She wants to be up there with you. She be praying every day for God to take her. <laughs> she's like, this is not my temporary home. God, take me. Take me away already, right? But my mom, she's so jealous, Auntie, um, that you're up there and you're already celebrating in your whites. Um, and, you know, we got to be down here with our masks. So <laughs> thank you so much, Auntie, for everything that you've done. Thank you to the family. Thank you, Uncle Jay, for continuing to love us as if we were your own as well. You know, you treated us so good. Every single time we're in town, you always treat us great. So, you know, Uncle, we love you so much. Um, our cousins, Magic, Marcus, Hannah, the grandkids, you know, we send our love to you guys. And, you know, there's nothing that we could say that could ever take this loss away. You know, there's nothing that anybody could do to take this away. But, you know, over time, hopefully it continues to get easier. Obviously, with family around, it continues to get a little bit easier. And to know that, man, she's she is celebrating, you know. And so, you know, uh, celebration week for sure. And, you know, Jesus' name. Um, I really don't talk a lot. But, um. My name's Nicholas Msaniai, also known as Nikki. But to, to, to the Tokyo family, Saltia family, Levu family, my name's Sun. And that's the name she gave me since I was six months old and she took me home with dad. I was sitting back there and listening to everyone's stories and uh, I was just thinking, Mom, why did you choose me? Why did you pick me? But thank you, Dad, and my brothers, Keith, Sticks, my sister, Hannah. I love you guys. And uh, I want you to know that I never forgot about you guys. I love you guys so much. And uh, even though I've been gone for a while, I live in Orange County. I'm hard still with you guys. I love you guys so much. And uh, to mom, thank you for molding me, just like my brothers when I was little. I used to go every, every other weekend to the Valley with my brothers. Um, my parents didn't like it very much, but you know, they trusted Uncle Jay and my mom, and also Keys. He was always right there, right next to me. And um, one of the stories I have, when, uh, when I graduated high school, I came back to visit, and she was on an oxygen tank. And me and Keys were, were playing the game in the front. And um, I didn't know that the, she had a wire that goes to her room. So I was sitting on the couch and I was relaxing. We were playing for like an hour, you know. An hour went by. She's like, is somebody stepping on my oxygen? And I look, she's like, no, mom. Uh, Keith's like, no, mom, nobody's on the oxygen. And I look, I was like, oh, bro, is this, the, is this the line right here? And she's like, Nikki, really? Really? You're going to do that to my mom? You want my mom to pass out? <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> you know. Um, and also there was another time, uh, every like I said, every weekend, every other weekend, I'll go to the Valley with my brothers, and uh, I'll wear clothes from Keys. And um, there's one week, he got tired of it, so he's like, Nikki, next weekend, you bring your own clothes, okay? No more wearing my clothes. So I came back, and mom, I, mom see me with my bag, and I had my shirt and my pants in there and my socks, and um, she's like, son, why'd you bring a backpack? Why'd you bring clothes? I was like, oh, because I was wearing uh, Marcus's clothes. And she goes, Marcus, did you tell him something? Did you tell him? Yeah, and then Marcus is in the back like, you, you know, I'm going to get it after. But yeah, I love you guys, and um, those are some of the memories I have. Also, I was never in the, the White Sunday, you know, that mom would put together. But the White Sunday plays mom, those are always bomb. And um, love you guys, and yeah, those are my memories.
Good afternoon or good morning, still family and friends. <clears throat> We're going to begin to close out our viewing service. So if you'd like to come say goodbye or bid your farewell to our mother, at this time, it will be the time for the next 10 minutes. Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and start the service with our family song. But we'll go ahead and start the, uh, the farewells now. Thank you.
Magic. Okay, you guys, you guys heard the directions for how many times now? Come up here. Father my Levi, please. Test one, two.
like me, let's see.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. We thank you, Jesus. We magnify your holy name. We are here to celebrate a life of a godly woman, a life of a mother, a life of a grandma, grandma, and a life of an auntie and cousin. We give you the honor and the glory this morning, Jesus. I pray this morning for your Holy Spirit come through this place anoint each and every one of us as we celebrate the life of Muselu Teresa Tokyo this morning spirit you are the only comfort you are the only helper you the one that give us strength and you the one that give us power this morning she loved to worship the Lord. She loved to give it all this morning. I asked the band and the worship team this morning. Let's worship him. Let's give him the glory. Let's celebrate the life of a godly woman this morning. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand up? I'm gonna talk to you like I am in the time. But your resources are not as your fear. Every fee in a league. But your resources are not as your fear. I will not be in a I will read your I will From Emmanuel's hands, I say there is a fountain so full of grace that flows from my Savior's veins. You see, I know for myself because it came and it healed me, it came and refreshed me, it came and it was. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad. Said I will, I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad. 
Sedia lo suafa, tapua i la wa piolea. Tua pua mato, pua mato poto poto. Sedia lo suafa, tapua i la wa piolea. Tua via le tama, via le tama. Just want to praise you. Lift my voice and say, I love you. You are everything to me. Oh, and I exalt your hope.
just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. Lift my voice. Lift, lift my voice. My voice and say. of the Lord this morning. Tato alala mai le mamalu le tua ile nei tai. We'll just go through our program this morning. Well, Pastor Matt is going to read through uh, the scripture of the Lord this morning. After that, Magic Tokyo for the eulogy. And then uh, Teresa's Pastor Mabea for the word of the Lord. May God bless you this morning. Good morning, everyone. We have two passages of scripture to celebrate Auntie Moose. And the first comes from the Old Testament in the book of Psalms 125, verses 1 and 2. And it says this, those who trust in the Lord are as secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forever the second passage of scripture comes from the gospel of john chapter 11 verses 25 and 26 and john writes this in verse 25 jesus told her i am the resurrection and the life anyone who believes in me will live even after dying, and everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. In Jesus' name, amen. God is great. Oh, I need more energy that we're celebrating my mother. God is great. Everything. And all the time. God is great. Amen. And I truly believe that this morning, this afternoon, um, you're probably wondering why Magic hasn't gotten to say nothing of during the viewing. But as they say, they saved the best for last. <laughs> you know, the reason we're gathered here today is often looked as a day to mourn, a day full of pain. But as believers who serve the greatest God, we are reminded that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. So turn to your neighbor and say, Moose is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You say that and believe that with me and my family this morning, okay? All right. Moliselu, Teresa, Tokyo, 
was born in San Diego, California on August 21st, 1968. She got married to our father, Tokio Tokio Jr., on October 5th, 1989, in Oceanside, California. My mother had three boys and one girl, Magic Daniel Tokio, married to Kayla Tokio, Marcus Jeremy Tokio, married to Rosa Tokio, Hana Tokio Oto, married to Roy Oto. My mother was blessed to be the grandmother of three grandchildren, which she loved so much. Mercy Ivy Tokio, Marcus Magic Matangi Tokio, Mason Aoese Limaamea Oto. My mother attended all her years of schooling in the greatest city of Oceanside. <laughs> From first to fourth grade, she attended Laurel Elementary. For fifth to sixth grade, she attended Ditmore Elementary. For seventh to eighth grade, she attended Jefferson High. And from ninth to twelfth grade, you know, <laughs> she attended Oceanside High School and graduated in the class of 1986. My mother's last place of em employment was Davis Panzer Marketing, at which she worked for uh, roughly about 15 years. My mother's father is Moli Yosefa Sautia, deceased. Sivale Sautia is her mother, deceased. My mother had 11 siblings. Probably had 20, but we'll count 11. <laughs> Manumoa Sengi, deceased. Fa'apuna Mulivai, deceased. Sunny Sengi, Silia Sengi, Sapai Levu, Sulu Sautia, Mariana Salanoa, deceased. Linda Lemaunga, Sivale Sautia, Michael Sautia, and Melissa Spirito. For the younger part of my mother's life, she lived on the east side of Oceanside on Garfield Street. After high school, she then moved to Caroline Circle. Then shortly after, she married and moved to Birdie Drive. Green Strait, what, what? <laughs> In the valley where she raised my siblings and I. My mother's last place of residency was in the Tri-City area of Oceanside. My mother was faced with challenging medical conditions, as you may know. My mother was a diabetic too. Due to kidney failure, she began dialysis on June 7, 2013. Although she was in the process of trying to be selected for a kidney transplant, she endured dialysis through the rest of her time here on Earth, every Monday, every Wednesday, and every Friday at 4 a.m. in the morning. She also dealt with vision issues, which involved frequent eye injections. My mother was faced with complications in her left foot, which involved multiple surgeries that also threatened amputation. I speak of my mother's medical complications to say this. Her faith never wavered. Through every obstacle, through every situation, in any situation, she kept believing and claiming her healing in Jesus' name. If you didn't know my mother or you were just meeting her for the first time, you would never know she battled with so much physical. You would never know that she battled with so much physically behind a beautiful smile. The most recent medical challenge my mother encountered was that she tested positive for COVID, which resulted in her being hospitalized due to low oxygen levels. As we know, being in a hospital nowadays, protocols are, protocols are set in place, preventing us from visiting or being with our loved ones as they're admitted. This was the toughest thing for my father because he could not be with her by her side. That didn't stop my mother from FaceTiming us every day to be a part of our daily routines. She would call us just to see what we're having for breakfast and lunch and also dinner. After about four days or so of being in the hospital, our family was advised by the medical staff that, th that our mother's oxygen levels were beginning to drop drastically, causing them to provide her with maximum oxygen support so they can assist her lungs. They stated they understood she missed her family, but every time she reaches for her phone or makes calls, her oxygen levels would drop at least 6%. My mother eventually moved to the ICU and we were advised that she would be placed on a ventilator for support as her oxygen levels have dropped dangerously. Again, I say, my mother's faith never, ever wavered. Never. As she FaceTimed us before being transferred to the ICU, oxygen tubes in her nose, along with an oxygen mask over that, she gave us a thumbs up and pointed to the sky.
I was the main point of contact due to the language barrier with my father. And as I remember, every call I received throughout the night from the hospital, as early as 2 a.m., then 5 a.m., then the final call that came at 7 a.m. was the most dreadful thing to endure. Seeing the hospital's number, terrified to hear bad news, but praying hard for good news, definitely was a very hard moment for me. On November 16th, my 31st birthday, my mother left us to be with her savior in her forever home. Moose was a go-getter, very stern, full of laughter and joy, courageous, determined, loving, and had a passion for worship. My mother was... She's telling me to slow down right now. My mother always thought one step ahead, even so that to the point she contacted Eternal, or Eternal Hill reps advised that she contacted them two days prior to her passing to set her funeral arrangements. So my dad and us would not have to do anything but sign her wishes. She left her mark on everyone she came across in life. My mother loved my father in the most passionate way and supported him in everything with great selflessness. She loved hard over her kids, her grandkids, and all of her family and friends. To my father, thank you so much for loving and taking care of mom, devoting your heart and soul to her in every single way possible. To my family, aunts, uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces, Thank you for your love for my mom through the years. We will never forget the relationship you each had with her. And for that, on behalf of my father and my siblings, we appreciate you all and love you so much. Mom, mom, my fatu, I'm going to miss you so much. Thank you for exemplifying the exact meaning of God's love. I love you so much with all of my heart. May you forever rest in peace. This is not goodbye, but I will see you again one day. Amen. Thank you, Magic, for that testimony about your mom. I'd like to greet everybody in the name of Jesus. Family and friends that are able to be here some of her church folks that are here just thank you for being here on this celebration for our sister Teresa I also want to thank Pastor Doug and the church here in Coastal for allowing us to be here God bless you guys in in many ways and always um, before I share a word of encouragement I want to say something about uh, Teresa, um, I was listening to Pastor Matt and how he didn't make it on that uh, list. Well, Pastor Matt, I got to tell you, I got one up on you. Because this I know for certain about our sister Teresa. I know for certain that Teresa loved Jesus with all her heart. She not only loved Jesus, she loved her family. Not only JT, the children, her sisters and her sibling, her brothers and all her siblings, but she also loved her church family. And I know for certain, because she told me herself, that I was her favorite pastor. <laughs> Maybe Pastor Matt can fit in there, her second favorite pastor, since he didn't make that list. Teresa, I've only known her since the time I've been here. But every time we, we communicated, she always had a smile on her face, and she always reminded me, Pastor, you know you're my favorite pastor. I said, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. And I remember one time when I went to visit her in the hospital, she would never call me and let me know, Pastor, I'm in the hospital, and sometimes JT wouldn't call me, 
but I would hear from others. So I went over there and I said, Teresa, if I'm your favorite pastor, you better call me the minute you come to the hospital. You know, and we were talking, and she said, well, you know, P, I said, okay, now that we're at that level, make sure you call me. You know, she was always a joy to be around. Whether in the hospital visiting with her or at church or wherever I see Teresa, she was always a joy to be around. But I think the most important thing that I'm certain of is that she's right now in the presence of her maker, the presence of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And there is no better place to be than physically in the presence of the Lord. Remind me of that song that I told my wife, if I'm ever to go to be with the Lord, this is a song I want to be sung at my funeral. If anybody asks you where I'm going, you let them know I'm going up yonder. I'm going up yonder to be with my Lord. Jay, I'm here to remind you that that's where Teresa is right now. Just as somebody said earlier, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. What a blessing that is. I'm going to share briefly with you. This encouragement is not for Teresa. This encouragement is for the rest of us that are here today. We, we are here to reflect, to remember, to celebrate, and even to grieve the loss of our loved one. But I'm also here to remind you, in spite of all that's going on, in spite of what we're going through with this COVID-19 and the craziness of our world, that Jesus is still the Lord of everything. There's no doubt in my mind that you and I are still in the palm of God's hand. And every day he gives us life. Every day. And I thank my brother Matt for reading Psalms 125. Because that's the Psalms for you and I. In the first two verses of that song, it says, the theme is, God is our protector. He protects us with whatever we're going through. And I like how Eugene Peterson puts it. He writes, those who trust in God are like Zion mountains. Nothing can move it. A rock-solid mountain. You can always depend on. I'm here to remind you this morning, my family, my friends, Teresa's loved one, that Jesus is that rock, that Jesus is that mountain, that he's our protector. Even in this COVID world that we live in today, God is still looking after you and I. Mountain encircled Jerusalem. God encircle his people, always has and always will. That's this God that we serve. Surround us with his protection. The theme of this psalm and the previous psalm, 124, is God is our protector. And if Jesus is still Lord of everything, he gives us this unshakable faith to know the truth that he protects you, you're going in, you're, coming, you're going out, you're coming, you're going. Even here today, God's protection surrounds the children, the family of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. And even in the midst of death and dying, Jesus is still Lord. Even in the midst of us losing our loved one, Jesus is still Lord. What a hope. What a promise to his children that no matter what we go through, what circumstances, what event that's happening in our lives, he's still Lord. I want to remind you this morning or this afternoon that Jesus is still Lord and he's still in control. Our security is in Jesus Christ. Your protection is in Jesus Christ. 
Ole tu ole na te pui pui ya te o e ma ole na pui pui ya Teresa le wa alu fa tasi malonali he's watching over you and I. This morning, as I was doing devotion, I read this quote from Charles Spurgeon. He says, a little faith will bring your soul to heaven. A great faith will bring heaven to your soul. All that is required of us to be in the presence of Jesus is the size faith of a mustard seed. But if you want to see Jesus move, as verse 1 says, those who trust in the Lord. What does that mean? That all your faith is placed in the Lord. You have confidence and you believe that God is my protector. Those who have faith in God, those who trust in the Lord. It says they are like, that, that the protection of the Lord is like Mount Zion unshakable, cannot be moved, will never disappear, will never cease to exist. In other words, we will not be shaken. We will not be moved. In spite of what you go through, in spite of what life throws at us, God is there to hold your hand, Jay. He's there to make sure that your faith is solid, solid in him. But you know, sometimes we run into a situation like this where we need to recast, recast that trust and confidence in God. And we need to remind ourselves that God has got us, that God is embracing us. Our protector is Yahweh, the very one who brings into existence whatever it exists is our protector. He's our strong tower. He's our rock. He's our refuge. He's our strength. Jesus said in the New Testament, he says in John 14, 16, and, and he says this to his disciples, he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave us. See, Jesus left, but he didn't leave us alone. Jesus went to be with his in heaven, but he says this, you're never alone. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Our advocate, our comforter, our encourager, our counselor will be with us every moment of the day, especially today. Especially when we're facing death and dying. Jesus is with us. Teresa doesn't need this sermon. You and I do. You and I are in danger. There's COVID all around us. Craziness of the society that we live in, of this world. We might be in danger. And especially in these times so close to the holidays. There's always a danger of loneliness. Jay, God is always with us. Your family, God, is always going to be with you. There's dangers of despair. There's dangers of hopelessness. There's a danger of feeling empty. There's a danger of wanting to give up on life. But you know what Christ brings? Christ gives us courage to continue living. And he gives us the grace that when God calls us home, the faith to say, Lord, I'm ready to come home. Lord, I'm ready to come home. Teresa knew that. She prepared well. She did all she can. So the hardship of losing her won't be that hard. It's hard. It's difficult to lose a loved one. But because he lived, because Jesus Christ lived, because Jesus Christ even overcame death. You and I have this hope that one day we will meet each other again. One day that Paul says to the church in Thessalonica, when that trumpet sound, they're going to rise first. You and I who are left will join them. And Jesus says this, and 
our New Testament reading. He says to Martha in John chapter 11, but third, Martha comes and tells Jesus, Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, our brother would not have died. You know, in the moments of death and dying, we tend to come into those Martha thoughts, those Martha moments where we say, Lord, if, if only this had happened. But you know who's in control of the life of the believers, Jesus. There is no, if only, Lord, if you were here. If only, Lord, you were in her room. No, God said, this is, this is my will. This is my will for my daughter. In the moments of death and dying, we tend to come to those Martha moments. It was trendy in Martha's days. And I believe it's still trendy now. As believers, we still find the what if moment trendy. And sometimes we want to follow that trend. But Jesus said, I am in control. That I'm here. And I'm Lord of everything, even death. Someone once says in the army that if if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. Some of you don't get that, but I know you that partake of the spirits. And I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. Know what I'm talking about. Somebody say amen. amen. Don't get intoxicated about the what ifs. Don't get drunk on the what ifs. Let that go. Let it go. And let the Holy Spirit bring the thought into your mind and our hearts is, Jesus is still Lord. Jesus is still Lord. Jesus says to Martha, after Martha said, Jesus, if you'd been here, he would not be dead. Jesus said, Martha, don't you know who I am? Don't you know that I am the resurrection? That I am the life. I'm even Lord of death. And he says, and anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. What a hope. She's not dead. Because that's what the Bible says. Even when they're dead. After dying, they live. I love that even after dying phrase. Because it reminds me that death is just the doorway to eternity in the presence of the Lord. And then Jesus goes on to say in Adverse 26, everyone, everyone says, me too. That's y'all. Right? So everyone says, me too. Me too. She can't hear you. Me too who lives in me and believes in me, will never die. That's the promise for you and I, that us too, we're not going to die. And as we move forward, because this is, it doesn't end here. It doesn't end here. She's with Jesus. You're here. Jesus is within you. I'd like to end with this scripture. Scripture from Paul to the, to the church in Corinth. And after that, we're going to do something before we end. And this is what Paul says. He says, listen, in the uh, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 15, verses 51 down to the end, verse 58. We know we're familiar with this. It's read at many uh, events like this. But I'm going to read it to you, and then we're going to end. Say, so listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. The dead will raise imperishable, and we will be changed. 
For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable. The mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable, with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the same that is written will come true. Death had been swallowed up in victory. Say amen. amen. Oh, where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jay, this is for you and the children and the family. Therefore, my dear brother, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is never in vain. I believe that's what she's telling you today, Jack. To your children, your family, stand firm. Be immovable. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because oh, whatever we do for the Lord, it's never in vain. Say amen. It's a difficult thing to lose mom. And I speak from experience, and many of us has experienced that. And it's really difficult to lose a spouse. But Jay, I want to remind you that God has got you in the palm of his hands. That he's going to protect you, see you through, take care of the children and the grandchildren, siblings, your entire family, God is your refuge. God is your rock. And for all of us today, let that be a reminder to us. She don't need security. She's in the presence of the Lord. She don't need protector. She's in the presence of the Lord. You and I need protection. And your protector is Yahweh, the mighty God of Israel. Our mighty God goes with us everywhere that we go. In Jesus' name. Before I end our service, I'm going to speak a few words over our sister. Before we do that, I'm going to ask our worship team just to sing one last song for us, and then we'll do that. Worship team. Praise the Lord. Now, before we sing this last song on behalf of our worship team, we just like to give honor and memory of our sister, Moose. She was a very big part in all of our lives. Growing up in church and in school, from grade school to junior high to high school, a week before the husband and the kids and the grandkids came, she had a lot of besties. To name a few, Sister Lisa here, um, the Sangale sisters out there, and me and my sister, the Paipula girls, and so many others. But a lot of our summers were spent together. So you can imagine so many memories. We saw each other through thick and thin, through the years. And even though we grew up and, you know, everybody started having their families and moved away, or, but one thing never changed. It's like when we met up you know, at gatherings, it's like picking up right where we left off. One thing about Moose is she was the one who was always clowning. She was always the one who was making people laugh and smile. She just had that gift about her. She was able to 
you know, bring sunshine into our days. And it was like, you know, when we had to go places, if, if you didn't want to go, but if you knew Moose was going, you wanted to go. You wanted to be there because you know it was going to be all about fun and laugh, laughing and just having a good time. And this song that we're about to sing is called God is My Refuge. And that's kind of like our reunion song. Every time we get together, that's the song, you know, because one thing we love to do growing up is sing, harmonize. And Moose was a worshiper. She was on the worship team for over 20 years. So we had that bond and that relationship, you know, as worshipers. And to my Saltia family, Levu and Sengi family, one thing I would say to you, I think Moose would want you to say, hold on. We're going through a lot, yes. It's not easy. But family, hold on. God is our refuge. He is our strong tower, the one that we can run to and be safe. Amen, family? So as we sing this song, we just want to give honor to our, the memory of our sister Moose. And we will always love you. You will be missed terribly. But you are in our hearts forever. God bless you, family. In Jesus' name. When clouds of doubt hover over me and the storms of life toss me to and fro, there is a place of refuge that I
For as much as it pleases Almighty God to take unto himself the soul of our sister departed, we bear her body hence to the place prepared for it, that ashes may return to ashes, dust to dust, and the imperishable spirit, refined by fire, may be forever with the Lord. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you, and keep your bereaved and wounded hearts. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. The worship team has one more song. But let me pray. So Martha for tight. Well, you man we are so near low of feeling. For the tie on the old langa musel. So for man we I lana for now no to lua. And may so no some to for feeling. And may say mato umma. Olo fata si la lo ifolo ne fale. We thank you, Lord, for the life of our sister. Manuela Malanga Teresa, Jesus, amen. I shall wear a crown. I shall wear a crown. When it's all over. When along with us if you know it. I shall wear a crown. Oh, I shall wear a crown. La, la, la. When it's all over, all said and done. When it's all over, I shall see his face.
Thank you, uh, Pastor Doc, for being here. It's a bless blessing to be with you or meet you this morning. So thank you very much. Uh, we, our culture, we appreciate for being here. So we, Tokyo's family and the kids have a kiss for you. It's not much, but it's a kiss for you. And then we have a kiss for the church for using this facility, 1,000. It's not much. I know you guys make more than that. But it's just a gift to appreciate everything you guys do for us today. Yeah, let's show us how we are met. Yeah, only. The two sides of the show are stop slap to Allah. Oh yeah, another fine guy. Oh, or 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 China. If you see, I am really like a worship team. She's been in a worship team for 20 years, so she loved the worship team. The man of the worship team. Yeah, we must slap to Allah. Yeah, Once again, for all the guests that are attending Auntie Moose's Celebration of Life, uh, there is lunch available for everybody, a boxed lunch. Uh, it is for takeout, so uh, please be sure to head over to the red tent, over to my right, your left, at the rear. Uh, please take your lunch, and God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this. We love you. Have a beautiful rest of your Friday.